Hello everyone and welcome to day 205 of Project 365. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about probably the worst movie I have ever seen. Okay, so there's some backstory to this. I'm home alone for the week, uh, except for th my uncle comes back Thursday, but he's out on a trip working, and so I'm home alone. To entertain myself, I decided, you know what, I'm going to order a movie through the Direct TV, well, it's Dish Network, but same thing. And so, I look through and I'm like, you know what, let me check out the independent films, because I'm a big independent film movie buff. I love all independent, I thought I loved all independent movies, but I generally like independent movies, because they tend to be better than a lot of the mainstream movies. However, uh, this movie that I'm going to be talking to you guys about today is definitely an exception to this, and a really big one at that. What movie could I possibly be talking about? A movie by the name of Mother's Day Massacre. Even, I mean, okay, the title, hey, that was kind of interesting. Mother's Day Massacre? What could be going on with this? A whole pile of shit is going on with this movie. That's what it is. Okay, to start off... You see a woman after she just has an abortion, and that alone will rile up a few feathers. Didn't bother me particularly, I've seen a few movies where it's, they start off like that, including Maelstrom, which is a really great independent Norwegian film. Um, so I thought, hey, it's kind of like Maelstrom, this shouldn't be too bad. So then she goes off, and for fuck all reason, she goes to see this woman, um... And then, for some reason, that's unapparent, that they never explain throughout the entire movie, uh, this woman is taking care of the lady who had the abortion's kid, and then the kid, or then she just goes and kills the lady who just had an abortion, because she was talking about the kid. And I'm like, um, okay? So then, flash forward to, um, now, because that was set in 1990. You flash forward to now, and you see a kid. Um, obviously he just got out of high school, or has been out of high school for a couple of years, still lives with his dad. His dad is a character in itself, in the sense that it's not really a character, it's just the epitome of everything that's racist about Texas. Um, <laughs> I mean, he goes to a shed, and he said that the shed must have been built by a chink, instead of a wetback. And I was just like, oh, you're kidding me, right? There's no reason to be this overtly racist in a movie. Okay, so then it goes on. Then it goes on to, um, the kid talks to his neighbor because apparently he's this socially awkward teenager. Woo, that's a new concept for a movie. Um, goes on, talks to this girl. And then they go end up flash, blah, 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 blah. Fast forwarding to um, a, a drive in movie. Now, I didn't even know these things still fucking existed, but apparently they do. And they go to a fucking drive in movie. Hey, why not? It's present day. And then they find. Then this is where the plot is actually built on. They go to this hick, quote unquote, hick town where apparently someone was growing like a field of pots. Now, again, I'm completely for the legalization, blah blah blah, but don't, please, for the love of God, unless you're Harold and Kumar, don't build your plot around pots. It doesn't work unless it's expected to be a comedy. This is expected to be a horror movie, and this is the empty shell of what a horror movie should be. Alright, so I can forgive the racism, I can forgive the stupid plots, then they go, okay, so now they go on to this hick town, and they're, the, the writers apparently just looked up hick on the internet and tried to follow every single stereotype about hicks they possibly could, and it, it was sort of just like, are you kidding me? Um, they were basically retarded, and I hate having to use that word, but they were fucking retarded. That was the writer's idea about what a hick should be, apparently, and it was quite depressing. Anyway, so now let's, let's look past the plot, because I can just go on about the plot forever. Let's go on to some of the other things that bothered me. 
So, racism, stupid plot, and stereotypes aside, as if that wasn't unforgivable enough already, um, apparently they don't know how to keep track of their props because, as my computer turned on, twi at least three or four times in the movie, they forget about a certain prop that they have. Like, there's a scene where a guy is carrying an axe, and then he ends up, like, killing a guy, and then out of nowhere he pulls out a knife and then chops the guy's dick off because apparently the guy thought a girl was in this closet thing and there was a hole and then he put his dick in the hole for no apparent reason because these teenagers are retards. I mean, they're stupider than the Hicks, literally. And, um, so yeah. And then it goes back to a shot to the guy who was just holding an axe and now he just has a knife. The axe has completely disappeared and you're just like, what? But I thought you had an axe, and now he just has a knife. And then the second time is, the kid has a stick. He gets a branch to defend himself. They go down into this creepy basement, he uses a lighter, and there's no branch to be seen in his hand. So cut to them running up the stairs, and he, this whole time, still no fucking branch. Then they're confronted by one of the hicks, and apparently... He has a stick in his hand again, and I was just like, what? I mean, I, I hope I'm not the only person who notice small, notices small details like this, but that is unforgivable. Now we can get to the bread and butter of this. The acting. Oh my god, as an actor, watching this movie was the greatest embarrassment I've ever seen to acting. This, they, they see their friend dead. And there is not even the slightest, oh my god. It's just, they move on to the next thing. Like, oh yeah, we need to get away. Like, there's no reaction to, holy shit, our friend who we came here with is dead. We see his intestines and yet we're not reacting. Lovely acting there. Uh, and then, it goes on to this girl. They're these two girls, they're supposed to be friends. One girl gets hit across the face with the, bu the butt end of an axe. The other girl doesn't even react. In fact, she's like, come on, let's go. Like, what? There is no character here. This is just stupid. And then, the only person who actually acts at all is the psychotic mom that you see at the very beginning of the movie who is somehow now connected to the father of the, the douchebag father, the racist father I told you guys about, of the, of, of the son. What? So, this plot, and this acting, both are completely horrible. And then, to top it all off, you can tell it was a very low-budget film because they couldn't even get fake blood. It seems like they were just like, oh, I don't know, let's just put Kool-Aid and water and then put in some cornstarch to thicken it up. Like, what? D do you not know that you can go to any theater shop and get fake blood and it's, it's quite cheap? This is by far the worst movie I've ever seen. And I've seen some pretty damn bad movies. I mean, ugh, this was stupid. I mean, and I thought Blair Witch was bad. And don't get me wrong, it wasn't that bad, but it was, it was pretty bad. So, for those of you who are interested in checking it out, search for Mother's Day Massacre. Um, it's good for a laugh. It's really good for a laugh. Um... Because if you love film and stuff, it's going to make you cry and weep on the inside, but you're going to laugh your ass off when you see how horrible it is. So, question for you guys today is, what is the worst movie you've ever seen? This has to be it for me. I, I can honestly not think of anything that's worse than this. Um, so yeah, leave your interesting comments below in the doobly-doo. And again, I'm borrowing that from Mr. Guitar Man because I think it's very catchy. Um, and yeah, so that's it for today, guys. I'll see you kids tomorrow. Bye.